Alright, so I just want to do a quick killifish update. Um, and these are going to be like non-native African killifishes. Basically the blue galars. That's kind of the only one I'm working with. Um, except for the plains killifishes, which I'll do an update on them eventually. I actually really, really do love these fish. They're just amazing. Super, these are wild fish and they really, really love to be fed basically any, any food. Any, any any food, just put it that way. So, um, but more specifically, I want to do an update on these. Now, these are my blue galaris, uh, so chest that I low. Low is in the collection point, um, and they're doing good. Uh, well, I mean, I lost one female. Now, what I think that was is I think he, which is that that nice big beautiful male right there. I think he might have killed the smaller. She might have killed the small, I don't know. They started to breed, and that's my fault for putting them all in the same and not giving safe places to hide. And by places to hide, I mean spawning mops. So I like to put in lots of spawning mops. You see we've got leaves in there. I'm going to keep the camera close so we don't get a bunch of glare. But uh, spawning mops and leaves, really great places to hide. If she wants to leave, like get out of the way from him being aggressive, she can literally just go and be gone and lost in all these spawning mobs. And I have about six. Maybe more, maybe less, but about six in a 10 gallon. I have about six in a five gallon for another pair of uh, smaller killifish. Um, and that just gives her the ability to leave if she wants to. That's a good shot of him. Wow, he's, he's starting to look good. He's starting to get that uh, trident tail now. I want to get a measurement on him. He's probably about five inches. He's probably about five inches. So he'll get he'll get up to I think about six. I think he might be one of the low. It's probably one of the bigger blue galaris forms. So uh, his tail should continue to kind of grow as, as he reaches his peak. His tail and finage will continue to grow. I'm hoping at least. Um, but I have been spawning them. I have pulled one, you know, one set of eggs, which we can go ahead and look at. So my killifish eggs are over here. So I've got, these are my dwarf reds. Let's set those down. And then these are my lows. And I'm about to spawn my actual blue galaris, my Niger Delta and my American strain, but these are my lows. We're not going to be able to see any eggs, most likely. Haven't even I haven't even hatched any killifish eggs, which is a shame. They just it takes about six weeks for them to uh, come to maturity. Which I need to go get a special towel to basically roll the dirt off of these and let me see eggs to see if they're ready. But I have a 626, 727, and a seven. 15. I could probably actually hatch these. I don't think they're going to be good. I I just don't think it's there's like a point to it. But you know what? I need to just go ahead and do it. That being said, I need to go ahead and hatch those. Um, 7.15 is my next closest, right? Yeah, so 7.15, six weeks. If we have about four weeks in a month, give or take a few days. Um, that means on 8... Towards the end of this month, so we're about 8.15 now, so we're about four weeks in. So these guys have about two more weeks to go before I can go ahead and hatch these. And these are, those are spawned in soft water. These are spawned in, in, in hard water. So my TDS was 170 right there. I have it written, which is not really that soft. So probably needs to be a little bit softer for that. And that's that that peat is pretty dang wet, but you know, I probably have like a few eggs in there that are good. It's just gonna be like there's a chance that I either have none to like two or three, maybe to maybe even ten, which is not what I would like. But uh, these lows are definitely good. Definitely have some good ones in there, so go ahead and put those back. Oh well, come on, low. Oh, that'll work. Uh, yeah. Get back in there. Get back in there. Uh, and then those are just some warm cultures. Grindles. But, um... Just doing a little bit of feeding now. Feeding the fish room. I just got done watching Rachel O'Leary's 
um, krill video. This, this isn't krill. This is like a grammaris type shrimp. It's not even grammaris. It's just red shrimp. Um, and then I've also got this that I'm trying out. This is... So I got an, a My Aquarium box. I'm not going to do a My Aquarium box unboxing. I just... I don't have the time, to be honest. Otherwise, I would. Uh, and I may do it in future months. I don't know if I'm going to get another box from them. But I may. I may. Uh, I felt like, to be honest, felt like I got a lot of food. Um, I got like five out of, so out of eight items, I got five things that were food. So that's like a lot of food, and it's just like, whoa, that was a lot of food. But, yeah, you know, I've already used quite a bit of it. Um, one of the things was fluval bug bites, which I feel like at this point in the game, who doesn't have fluval bug bites? But, then again, you never know. Now, this is my Niger Delta, Blue Dolores. Uh, he currently is not with a female. I did have him with a larger female, so I got a trio. She actually became a belly slider, which in killifish, what that means is her swim bladder went bad. Sometimes that's that's up to like a late hatch. She, you know, was one of the later ones to hatch. And, you know, it's, it's just you know, something didn't go right. The genetics weren't good. She was not of the good lineage. <laughs> Um, so, I, I did euthanize her. I, I'm not going to use her for breeding stock. When you have a fish that is literally just stuck to the bottom of the aquarium and all she does is like just slide. It's belly slider is the term. I mean, she just slides around. When you go to feed her, yeah, she can use her energy to get up to the top. But it's, it's not what she wants to do. You can tell it's like extra work. So, she spends... 95% of her time, that's probably not too far off of how much she spends, but 95% of her time just on the bottom of the aquarium sliding around and it's, I feel like she's at risk for infection and it's just stressful and not healthy, so I did euthanize her. Um, and I'm trying to actually, to be honest, because I do have fish that need to get euthanized, I'm thinking of getting a predator tank Maybe a 75 gallon I just turned into like an Oscar tank or where I get one Oscar or I get one Jack Dempsey and uh, that's just my predator tank or maybe a Polypterus. Um, preferably, you'd be honest, I'd rather have like a uh, like a cow goby, which is like a, a type of gudgeon. But this is my female Niger Delta. She's fat with eggs. She is ready to spawn. Their TDS is definitely soft. It's under 100. And the only reason it's under 100, I would run it around like maybe 100 to 110 for them. And that's that's to allow them to have fertile eggs. Um, or for their eggs to fertilize. Because they need that soft water. But they're at, I'm going to say 80. So they're at 70. You guys can't see that. Dang it. Come on. What is my hand doing it? Can you see that? You guys can kind of see that. There we go. 76. And the reason they're at 76, well, they probably were more at 86, but I did a change. I did a water change today, 25% on those two tanks. I didn't do the, any of the other ones because I wanted to kind of wait and see what it would do. But they're at 75, so I'll go ahead and I'll do these. 75 isn't too soft. I wouldn't want to take them much softer than that. But uh, they get water changes with about 86 TDS, basically because I have these these fish here, which that is um, Betahendra, which is a wild betta. That's actually a male right there. I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in. That's a male. Oh, come on, now focus. I think that might be another male. But I have two pairs. I have two males, two females. Uh, they're they're a bubble nester. I haven't spawned them yet. But I need to kind of probably split the pairs to, to spawn. But I'm just enjoying them now. I think that's two males there by the look of it. The females just won't be as, you know, as beautiful. No, I think I, I couldn't tell you to be honest. That may be a male on the left and a female in the center of the screen. Definitely a male on the left, definitely. He is really beautiful. Sorry for the camera work. But... Yeah, that could be a female there, to be honest. She looks a bit... Yeah, I'm going to say it's a female just because she looks swollen, so she's probably ready to breed. I probably need to go ahead and spawn them, and that'd be a male on the left. But I have two pairs, two males, two females. 
And the only reason I got two pairs is because I, I could get the second pair for very, very cheap from the seller. And the seller's actually in a city by me, but she wouldn't agree to meet me, which kind of sucks because I had to pay for shipping and also have my fish shipped. But still, it's nice to know I have a breeder nearby. Maybe I'll make friends. This is not on the killifish or softwater side of things. This is actually going to be for the Fajaca. It's going to be a tank mate. If not for the Haka, it's it's going to be a uh, for to make my uh, Australian biotope a little bit more fun. But this is a purple spotted. I'm assuming a northern purple spotted gudgeon. I'm a Brinda gudgeon, I believe. There's there's another part to that name after Magrenda that determines whether it's northern or southern. I don't know it now off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen for the both the northern, the northern and southern. But this is just one right here. Um, I got this one. I didn't get this one originally because I thought it was sick, and I went back to the local fish store and it appeared to have healed up. But I think this is actually uh, for sure female. And I have one here just going through quarantine now. She's got you know quarantine meds in her now. Um, and I actually have four more of them right here. This is most likely a male. Right here, he's nice and big. And I love these fish. You're, you're going to see a lot of these from me. Um, I'm definitely going to spawn. Come on, come here, come on. Come on. They're, they're going to be very, very personable fish. From my research, they're going to be very personable. They're going to eat out of my hands. Very much that, what, what's up? What are you doing? They're not scared. I mean, so... I've got four of them in here, definitely have some males in here. Uh, I've got at least two, maybe three males. That might be a female there, which is, it's really good that I went and got that other little one if these all end up being males. But I just think you're gonna be fun. I may utilize them as coals, um, but I know I wanna breed them. Here's the thing, I don't wanna utilize a breeder as a coal because when you're using a fish to cull for you, you're running the risk of them getting, you know, internal parasites. And I want a very hardy fish to be a culler for me. And that would be something like a polyipterus because they're they're like dinosaurs. Um, maybe an Oscar, but I think Oscars, you know, they look tough, but they're really not. They're always getting hole in the head. So I think Oscars really are not a super tough fish. They're they're hardy as hell, but I don't know. Maybe I don't I don't want to. I don't want to do that to an Oscar. I feel like it's done enough by every person, you know, who gets into the hobby unknowingly and gets that Oscar. So I kind of don't want to do it to an Oscar. Plus, I like polyipterus quite a bit. So uh, I'll probably be having another tank in the fish room. I'm not sure what yet, but this is going to be the... This is We're getting off topic, so this will be a bit of an update. But this is going to be the Fajacas tank. That right now just has nothing but algae fish. It's just, well, I also have some quarries, I guess, but I may turn that into a coal tank, and then this will just be like my monster wall. I don't, I guess, but um, I might turn that into like, I don't know. Maybe I'll get a big aggressive fish in there. Not too big, but something that'll eat other fish for me. Because I have a lot of coals, and I, I to be honest, um, we can look at a coal here. Uh, I mean, you'll see why, but this is cold with clove oil. Uh, a little bit of fin damage. I think that was just a split in the tail because of how crowded the guppy tank is, but um, it's got a really swollen stomach, and this has been here for maybe 30 minutes. Um, it's just had a really swollen stomach for a while, and this tank, and it's been like that for a while, so I'm, I'm assuming it's deformed or poor genetic. I'm not sure, to be honest, but... Hey, I, this tank gets treated with Epsom salts maybe once a week. I just throw, you know, a tablespoon per 10 gallons in there just to kind of help them move stuff through. Um, and this is just my mixed fancies that are, you know, they get sold to stores. And uh, it's important, very important that I cull because I want mine to look better than what they're getting imported. That's vital that mine look better than what's being imported. And, uh... I need to do some culling in here because there's endler endlers got in here somehow, um, which is my fault. But I think I, got, I allowed endlers to get in. One male endler got in and he's got his genes in here, and I really want to get those out. And I just don't want to like do that to unhelp to healthy fish. So I need to get a culling fish. So I'm open for suggestions if anybody knows of maybe like a wolf fish, perhaps even. Uh, I would enjoy something different that's fun, that's personable.
you know. Oh, I'm sorry, bud. Didn't mean to scare you. You were out ready to get bread. Um, and then over here, back to the killifish, what we have are two female American strain blue galaris from Lucas, LRB Aquatics. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're hiding always. Well, there's one right there. She's... These are just two females I got from him on sale on, on his website. Um, probably a few breeders he just wasn't, you know, he didn't need at the moment. So he cleared them out or he needed tank space. Which you can find. Lucas will do that here and there. You just got to watch. Um, he's not going to do it with this shrimp ever. So don't get your hopes up. Um, but, uh, <laughs> look at that face. They're not getting fat with eggs. I don't know what's wrong with them. They have not gotten fat. So I've actually removed half of the paper here and I actually utilized black trash bag to to uh, you know black my tanks out uh, for smaller ones even larger ones sometimes but um, in hopes that they would see him and get fat with eggs because they're both basically the same they're very similar in color and pattern and all that so I was hoping that they would see him and get fat with eggs and it would put their hopes up but what I think I'm gonna do and if you're a killifish person and you know if I shouldn't morally do this, like mixing rainbows, um, I will always have a constant note. I will mark it on the eggs. But what I'm thinking about doing is just introducing him to their tank. And I have dewormed them multiple times now. Levamisol, Praziquantanol. I mean, they got a seven-day Praziquantanol treatment, multiple Levamisol treatments. I have a general cure. I've ran them through meds to make sure they're healthy. They are healthy for sure. I've put them through meds and water changes and made. I've softened their water, everything. They're, I mean, they probably need their water a little bit softer to, to match his. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce him to, to them. Um, and in doing that, hopefully, you know, they, they see the male and then they're like, oh, it's, we're cool. We, we can breed. We're not just trapped in an aquarium, you know, condemned to never see a male. Um, because that's, that's what they're, they're ladyfish. That's what they're looking for, especially in the killifish world. These fish just, they, they live their life waiting to see that bright, flashy male. When they see it, it excites them and then they get happy and they get to spawn. Um, you know, before the their season's over. Um, so I'm not sure if they're too old at this point. They shouldn't be too old. It can happen. I don't think I got sold too old of fish by Lucas. I'm um, pretty sure he wouldn't do that. And I'm um, pretty sure they're, they're still within their first year of life. And these are fish that can breed for a few years. So, um, you know, three to five years. So I'm pretty sure they're in their first year of life. Um, there's the other female there, poke her head out. That's where they kind of stay all the time. So, thinking about doing that, if you know anything that I should keep in mind while doing that, please let me know. If you know of a reason why I definitely shouldn't be doing that, like crossbreeding rainbows, like I'm committing some type of sin, which I'm sure I am, I think I am, um, by doing it, but um, I don't know if I'll be able to sell the babies. I literally may just take those eggs and put them into my rainbow tank and allow them to eat them. Um, which is fine. If it makes these girls happy, then that's all that matters. What's up, honey? Did you come out? There's just so much glare. You guys can't really see. But she decided to come out, which is good. But you can kind of see. Let me get a good look at her. What's up, honey? What are you doing? Hmm? What's up? Hmm? Oh, what's up, girls? Yeah, they just kind of hide all the time. And trust me, I had them in a, a more planted tank and I literally took them out of it because I thought all those plants were keeping them from coming out. And they've just been hiding since basically almost they got them. So I'm not sure. Maybe they just, they're scared of me because I don't sound like Lucas. I don't, I need to like soften my voice and like make it deeper and like, really work on my southern draw or something i don't, I don't, I don't know how to talk y'all I, 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 the texan comes out I, I can't do a lucas i just could not do a lucas voice it's just i don't know I, I couldn't do it i couldn't pull it off i'm not that i'm not that chill i'm not a fish wizard so uh, i'll just say y'all a lot that's all that'll happen y'all i can't do a southern draw like lucas and i'm from the south <laughs> um but yeah, that's killifish update. There, she's she's ready to spawn. I've been growing her out long enough. She's ready to go. So, I will be doing them soon. 
they'll be getting spawned soon. I, I, I may, I'll probably spawn them first, and after he's, I don't know. I, I don't know what I want to do first, because I don't, in case they're sick, I don't want to hurt her or him before I spawn them. But I don't think they are. I think, I think they should be fine, but I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, hopefully this is a pretty fun update. I, I don't know, it's probably not that fun. But it's an update, I'm getting something out. Also want to mention that, um, yeah, the, 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 the page is going through some construction at the moment. I've got some videos I am working on, and I'll get those out as soon as I can. Um, just have a lot on the plate right now. I've got a new tank I'm trying to set up for the Fajaca. I'm trying to redo the YouTube page because YouTube is about to go through a change. I'm also working on a website. I should have that up by October at the latest. I'm, I'm shooting for September, but October by the latest. Um, and I'm not working on it. I'm having someone else do it for me, so that is actually going to happen. Uh, working on a website, and then also the, the fish room, and I'm breeding all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, growing out fry, breeding fish, working on plants. I'm going to take this tank down, the 100 heavily planted. It's going down. If you want anything out of it, let me know. I, I'd love to just get rid of it in bulk and make it easier on me. And then a sneak peek there, the uh, 20 long rack. So, um, yeah. But anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you on my next video whenever that may be. Y'all have a good one. And uh, I'll see you next time.